flight movies today and knowing flight attainment apart from Ahmed. The thought of having the flag of Imam Hussein al-Islam, I could not fail that. Shukr alhamdulillah. Shukr alhamdulillah. Shukr alhamdulillah. May this flag fly high until the day of judgment and be a symbol of peace and love for all of humanity. Welcome to this amazing journey to the rooftop of the world where we are going to take the flag of Hussein ibn Ali and raise it high on the legendary but notorious Mount Everest. Uh, my name is Sajjad Shah. I'm from Luton. Uh, I've always uh, wanted to take part in uh, helping uh, uh, orphans and children in particular, uh, the most needy, who have been impacted by conflict or natural disaster. And one of the reasons why uh, I also wanted to do this is to uh, bring about the attention of the world uh, to the true message of Karbala that uh, Hussein ibn Ali gave in Karbala 1400 years ago, uh, to reach out to the most needy, to reach out to the most vulnerable. So we put all of these um, ideas out on the table and uh, some of them were sailing around the world, uh, ballooning around the world, uh, jumping out of uh, a vehicle from space, uh, going to the deepest point in, in, in the ocean, the Mariana Trench. Um, uh, and we thought, let's see what is the most cost effective uh, and see how we can uh, plan these uh, events. Eventually we realized that some of them were just way, way too dangerous uh, or way, way too expensive or would take a huge amount of time. Until the idea came about Mount Everest uh, and everyone uh, knows, or a lot of people know about Mount Everest, uh, how dangerous it is. Uh, and then we discovered that apparently 3,000 people have died on Mount Everest. But you know, we thought, well, why not uh, bring that to the forefront? None of our team members had any uh, mountaineering experience prior to going to Mount Everest. Um, nothing of the level and uh, uh, height of Mount Everest, uh, but Mount Snowden, uh, 1,000 meters high, uh, we had about three sessions on uh, uh, Mount Snowden, but nothing at the level of uh, Mount Everest. Before we started this journey, and uh, we'd made this decision to go, my fitness levels were terrible. I was 130 kg, I was very heavy. Uh, I was going up uh, a flight of stairs would make me breathless. Uh, my doctor had told me that I was border level diabetes. Um, and uh, my cardio training and everything told me that I needed to do a hell of a lot of training. My friends and family uh, thought that I could never do this trek because of my fitness levels at the beginning of this journey. Uh, to be honest, looking, at, looking back now, uh, I would have said the same thing to anybody at my fitness level. So the team, uh, team preparation has been going well, however with every team there's people of different abilities. Um, fortunately I, my weight's lower, uh, my fitness is pretty good, as well as some of the other guys, Brother Armour, he's, he's very fit as well. Uh, we've got Brother Sajjad who's, who's leading the, the fundraising campaign and this man is uh, 45, doesn't look it, and he's about 130 kg. Now the challenge really is for people like that, not saying he's, he doesn't have the ability, but they have different forces that will affect them. And you see the real drive and determination with people like him. The intention that we made to climb the legendary but notorious Mount Everest 
was for several reasons. One, the center that we was building needed desperate funds and also to raise awareness around the globe about the message of Karbala that was delivered 12, 1400 years ago on the plains of Karbala. We wanted to raise the flag of Hussein ibn Ali at one of the highest peaks in the world to get the world's attention or do something that would get the world's attention for these both causes. My family's initial reaction was absolutely uh, shocked. They were shocked, shell shocked, and they were saying, "No way! You're joking. This is, you know, you're pulling our leg. This is not happening. No way you're going to do this." Uh, base layers. Uh, I think we'll put, take uh, about about five or six base layers just yeah. in case five base layers especially if we're not going to have any showers there um, crampons as well yeah uh, crampons for uh, and some of them are really expensive i've seen i've been looking on uh, uh, the internet yeah uh, to see what we can get and i think the cheapest one at the, at the shop uh, we're going to go uh, on the weekend uh, i'm just calling you to just let you know uh, that we're going to be coming on the weekend uh, uh, to purchase the equipment that we need uh, for our uh, trekking to Everest. Uh, so I'm on my way to Decathlon, uh, which is a, a sport uh, uh, gear shop. Ali Eskri, uh, who's one of our trekkers, is going to meet me there. Um, we're going to um, ask the shop to recommend uh, some trekking gear because they specialize in uh, trekking equipment. Uh, and we've uh, also experienced uh, uh, some conditions on Mount Snowden where uh, we was uh, hit by a, a rain uh, storm uh, and all of our equipment uh, got soaked and the clothes didn't uh, resist the water and we was completely soaked to the bone. Uh, for three hours we trekked in uh, this down, freezing downpour by the way, uh, which was a mixture of uh, uh, snow and sleet and rain um, and by the time we got to the bottom we was completely completely soaked including our trekking boots uh, our um, right down to our base layers so we definitely need to make sure uh, we buy uh, uh, some quality uh, equipment and gear and I think this shop uh, I've been checking online as well and they've got uh, the required equipment Assalamu alaikum. Oh, Hi, brother. Not bad. How are you? Good. Have you bought stuff? Uh, no. I'm just having a look. I think I'm going to need a bigger sleeping bag. Uh, you're definitely going to need a bigger <laughs> tent for all your stuff. Anyway, let's have a look at some backpacks right. and uh, jackets and stuff. Have and you spoken then, to anyone? Uh, we can get some help. Excuse me. Hi, can I help? Uh, could you do us a favour and show us uh, some uh, trekking jackets and uh, mountaineers? Yeah, they're just round here. So these are the warmest jackets in our shop, uh -huh. and they're all waterproof as well, even with the zips. Okay, and was it just one jacket, or is it like a, a base layer? Uh, there are multiple layers in them, they are detachable as well. So it's like a, a warm layer there, and then the fully waterproof layer is the coat. And do you have any uh, tr uh, waterproof trousers with these? Uh, yeah, we do, they're just around here. So here are the waterproof trousers. Uh, they're designed as an over trouser, so mm -hmm. you wear them over your normal uh, trousers that you're wearing while trekking. Do you recommend anything else that we might need for uh, trekking? Yeah, so we've got some walking poles that will come in really handy. They're just round here. 
Oh, walking sticks, I think uh, that's a great idea for me, especially at my age. So I'm going to need one that can uh, take 20 kg and one that can take up to 7 kg and got to be waterproof as well. There were times where, when we were during training sessions, we thought, can we really put ourselves through this, this pain uh, to do this for a noble cause? And we kept thinking of those uh, children, uh, the homeless and hungry, uh, and to put a smile on the faces of children and orphans and the most needy, which kept driving us on. Well, you, you can see the struggles when they're going up the mountain, especially when they're coming down after trekking for eight hours. However, when you see in their eyes what is driving them, again, it, it's Imam Hussein. What was the reason? It's for them not only to raise the flag of Imam Hussein, but what we can do to help people in his name, okay? So we know whether it's to feed the hungry and the homeless or create a community center where all people are welcome and it's inclusive and actually give a good image of Islam. So when you ask them and you speak to them, it's that drive for Imam Hussein which is taking them on. My family really thought uh, I was really crazy for doing this and some of them had a lot of faith in me and some of them didn't. Uh, even to this day many people don't believe that we made this journey to the rooftop of the world. But Alhamdulillah with the flag of Hussein ibn Ali with us that had travelled through several journeys, through several challenges uh, like uh, the marathon here in Luton, the walk from Najaf to Karbala, the, uh, the climb to Mount Snowden, uh, through the three peaks of Yorkshire Dales and then eventually with us to the rooftop of the world, which was an absolutely um, incredible journey. Bismillah rahman rahim here we go. I think I'm going to stop filming here because it's quite windy and I might need to grab the sides. One of the most difficult things uh, for us to do on Everest was to keep our taharat for prayer time uh, because of the lack of water. Uh, we would get up at Fajr, the Sherpas and the porters would see us uh, committed uh, in this fashion and towards the end of our journey, the last few days, they joined us in prayer at Fajr, which was an amazing feeling that through our actions that these uh, Sherpas who may or not have seen people pray before actually joined us, which helped us to deliver the message of Elul Bayt al-Islam after prayer to them and make them understand why we're doing this journey. Many of the other professional climbers uh, who we were trekking with at the time, because there were other expeditions uh, on Everest, uh, asked us uh, many questions about uh, who is Hussein? Uh, what does this uh, flag represent? Uh, why are you doing this? Why are you risking your life uh, for this? You're not professional climbers. You know, they had, they had uh, uh, trained for approximately a year. They'd done five peaks of the world. And they was asking us, uh, how many peaks have you done? And when we told them just Mount Snowden and the Three Peaks, they would laugh at us. Uh, but at the same time would say, you are amazingly courageous people and you're doing this for this cause, in the remembrance of this personality who did this 1400 years ago. And that helped us to talk more about the El Bayt al-Islam uh, and, and the Holy Prophet and the true form of Islam, which gave them an insight uh, and a counter to the propaganda that's going on in the world against Islam. One of the key elements of this journey to the rooftop of the world was to take the flag of Hussein ibn Ali uh, to the highest peak in the world. Uh, and there were several uh, motives behind that. Uh, one of them was to highlight to the world 
about the meaning of this flag, it, what it stands for, peace, justice and love for all, no matter what race, religion, background or gender you are from. That's one thing. Uh, two, uh, to bring people's attention to the house of the Yellow Bed al-Islam. To make them understand that these people, these great personalities were put on this earth to help guide mankind to the right path and the true meaning of humanity and reaching out to the most vulnerable, especially those children who have been impacted by conflict and natural disaster. The flag of Imam Hussein represents many things, truth, justice, peace, but also it represents the highest moral standards set by Rasulullah. And that's what we wanted to portray and let people know. See, right now, flags of hatred are being flown across the world and they're being touted in the media. And this is the flag which we want to show everyone and show them what really the true face of Islam is through the flag of Imam Hussein. As we got closer to our destination and our Sherpa guide pointed that that's our destination, we became very, very emotional at that time because there were points in the journey that we, some of us felt like giving up. But when the words were said that you are now only 200 meters away from your final destination, there was tears in our eyes. And we, we, we looked to the flag of Imam Hussein al-Islam and said only a few more steps. Ya Allah, help us to reach our final destination. It's only 200 meters away. And with tears in our eyes, we continued. To be honest, I don't know how I did this. There was many a time throughout this journey that I, like, I felt like giving up. But Amr pushed me and pushed me and many of the team members. And the thought of having the flag of Imam Hussein al-Islam, I could not fail that. And Alhamdulillah, we have done it. Shukr Alhamdulillah. Shukr Alhamdulillah. Shukr Alhamdulillah. The flag of Imam Hussein al-Islam has reached the rooftop of the world. Alhamdulillah. All in aid of raising funds for the most vulnerable. May this flag fly high until the day of judgment and be a symbol of peace and love for all of humanity. And be a reminder of the sacrifice made on the plains of Karbala 1400 years ago. That you must stand against tyranny and oppression and must stand against all forms of terrorism and do not let it overcome any peace movement that you may have in your own respective communities. May this flag live long and the name, inshallah, in our hearts and minds forever and ever. When we reached our destination, we took out the flag of Hussein ibn Ali. And as the team raised it high, I fell to my knees and raised my hands high and did a prayer and remembered Imam Hussein al-Islam, how he sacrificed himself and his family on the plains of Karbala and, and praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the energy and strength to reach to this destination. وَتُمَتِّعَهُ فِيهَا تَغِيلَةً بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ Thank you for allowing us to achieve this major milestone. Thank you for giving the strength to all who have joined this journey. Every single one of them have struggled and soldiered on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill their naik hajat. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Elevate the Marhumin, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the will and strength to keep going to help those who are most vulnerable in the world and the true message of Karbala for all of humanity to reach out and love each other and live in peace and harmony no matter what religion, race, color, gender you may be from. And that is the true message of Karbala. And we remember Baq Sayyidah Fatima salamu alayha and we did the Zadari in such a passionate way, on such a height on the legendary but notorious Mount Everest, where I believe that this hasn't been done before. And we reached out to the Elul Bayt al-Islam and thanked them for helping us and guiding us and motivating us to do this amazing journey to the rooftop of the world. This is the flag of Hussein ibn Ali, the flag 
that we took to the legendary but notorious Mount Everest. In aid of raising funds for the most needy, for children who have been impacted by conflict and natural disaster. There are other people who raise flags around the world with Arabic writing on it, but we would like to tell the world that that flag does not represent the true face of Islam. We would like to tell people about the true flag of Islam, the flag that I show here, the flag of Hussein ibn Ali, that represents peace, justice, and love for all, no matter what race, religion, background, or gender you may be from.